Good afternoon all, uh, my name is John Myers, uh, I'm the Chief Growth Officer of DeepCrawl and welcome to our next webinar in the series that we've been doing over the last six to eight months. Today is all about the chaotic landscape of JavaScript and I have a fantastic uh, presenter and guest here with us today, uh, Mr. Bartosz G, from, who's the CEO and Head of SEO of LFA. Welcome Bartosz and thank you for taking the time to be here with us today. Uh, hello John, it's uh, my pleasure. Uh, yeah, uh, very, very happy to, to join you guys and talk about that. Uh, today about JavaScript and how it's changed over Brilliant. the last couple and, of and, years. And, and great, great to have you, mate. Obviously, you know, obviously I'm going to hand over to the usual sort of format. I'll do a quick intro. I'm going to hand over to Bartos, and Bartos can obviously uh, take you through the in, insides uh, and outsides of obviously the JavaScript world. And it's fair to say that Bartos has become Mr. JS, I would say, in some respects. I mean, he's been all over the world. In the last <laughs> year. I'm going to coin it here, mate. I'm going to throw it out there. You've been all over the world and you've been speaking on JavaScript and, and sharing all of your knowledges and you wrote some amazing research uh, into, into all of that sort of side of things as well. And it really is great to have you here to share some of that knowledge with us today. Um, I really think it is fair to say now after seeing some of your recent presentations, what you don't know about JavaScript and what you're not going to present about JavaScript really isn't worth knowing. So no, no pressure on that one in some respects. I think what's great to see, <laughs> just putting you under pressure there a little bit. Thank you, John. I'm just disconnecting. <laughs> <laughs> it's fair to say, though, I think JavaScript is getting more and more prevalent in everything that we do. You know, and I think the key things that people are going to want to understand is not just the technical aspects of JavaScript today, which I'm, I'm absolutely certain you're going to shed some light on. It's really is how the search engines are setting themselves up to deal with it. You know, are they ready to deal with it? You know, how have they been dealing with it? Are they are they really still trying to figure it out in some respects? And really as SEOs through to CEOs, how are we going to need to embrace this as well? Um, because we're starting to see more and more of it becoming more and prevalent. And obviously we're talking about the shifts towards things like mobile with Google at the minute. Where does it fit into the bigger picture? And really let's just figure, you know, let's figure that one out over the next hour, mate. You know, as I say, it will be the usual format. Over to your good self very shortly to present. And we love questions as well as in these webinars. For any of you guys that have attended before, and it's great to see more and more people joining as I'm talking right now, we love the questions. So you can submit your questions in the normal way. Uh, we'll take the questions via the webinar chat box on the on the right hand side of your screen. And please do put them in because as I say after this, we're going to get into the Q&A and uh, I'll ask as many questions as I can and me and uh, Bartos can debate them up through till the, till the hour's over. So really please do get those ready because uh, all speakers and presenters, you know whether it's on a webinar or at a conference, love questions and I'm sure Bartos will be looking forward to some, to some later on. So without further ado, because uh, we're five minutes in already as time flies, I'm going to hand over to, uh, to Bartos and uh, get the presentation up and running and uh, let you do your bit and share your absolutely valuable insights into JavaScript. So over to your good self, sir, and um, looking forward to the presentation myself as well. Thank you very much, John. Uh, thanks a million. Uh, I'm trying to see if I'm presenting already. Um, so I'm going to ask the most popular question ever. Can you see my screen, guys? I'm guessing. All good. It's right there, Bartos. Up and running. Okay. Okay. Sorry for that. So first of all, uh, hey guys, uh, I lost my voice last week in uh, at the Semex London, and I I was quiet for last two days, saving it for today. So I hope I'm gonna last till uh, the last slide. Uh, today we're gonna talk about the JavaScript and how it changed over last uh, couple of years because it became so um, so popular and. The question is um, just, I, I remember talking about JavaScript this year, like I think it was one and a half year ago and people would be like, what the hell is that? And we for sure won't need it um, soon. But it grew really, really fast and you would be surprised how um, how difficult it is it was to, to get a JavaScript website properly indexed in, in, in Google. Uh, and how much data we got over last, uh, I, I would say year, last year was like extremely dynamic. And for those of you who are not as deep uh, in JavaScript as uh, probably me or John, um, is that SEO was never this dynamic. So over last year or two, there were so many announcements, so many changes in how uh, the web is crawled, how the indexers or crawlers work. So it's extremely dynamic and it's really exciting right now with because it's a little bit more transparent than just like let's say five years ago. Mm. And 
Google is pushing more ch changes than ever. And even though I would say none of the changes that are extremely important or as popular as like Penguin and Panda, because they don't affect you uh, this quickly and directly, or sometimes you don't know you're affected by them. So with Penguin, it was huge because it was just one day and everyone would like lose the rankings. Right now, it's just as dynamic, but you, you need to watch out for all that. Um, and uh, I'm going to drop it right here. So there is still too many SEOs who live in that fantasy world made out of uh, domain authority scores or keyword densities or all the other SEO hacks. So it's really crucial that you um, you get uh, your stuff together if you're one of them uh, and start uh, get start getting into technical SEO. And just to uh, make this statement a little bit easier, I'm going to give you an interesting fact that always bothered me. So that tiny pocket in jeans was always designed for pocket watches, so that's why it's there. And when we look at some of the biggest websites in the world, it seems that mm, most didn't hear about technical SEO yet. And you will see some of the examples today um, in the in the deck. And yeah, this is also exciting. So McDonald's once made bubblegum bubblegum flavored broccoli. So I figured you all should know that. And last. Mm, the most interesting is that JavaScript is here to stay. And JavaScript SEO is not a geeky option anymore. So it's not like, I remember when I was first talking about JavaScript, people would give me the look of like, this stuff maybe is interesting, but it's not really, it doesn't really affect me. Now, I think it, it's safe to say that it affects most or if not all uh, SEOs. Um, and, and have you heard about, and the two waves of JavaScript indexing. So just recently, Google dropped this huge uh, knowledge bomb at Google I.O. Uh, that, first of all, this is my moment of, uh, of fame because all of our research uh, adds up. So all of all of our um, publications about that, all of our experiments were right. But then they finally explained um, how uh, how JavaScript indexing works. But today I will, a part of the two waves, I will tell you uh, the things you need to know to, I, I call it sound smart in 2018, but basically all the stuff that you need to know about, about JavaScript SEO, so you are up to date with what's happening. So starting from like real basics, uh, uh, web evolved, so there was just HTML, and then there was some CSS, and then they, people will start adding a little bit JavaScript just to make things pop, like with uh, with sliders or whatever. Uh, and then the, the 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 amount of JavaScript would uh, would grow over time, which I'm going to show you uh, later on in the deck. And right now there is more and more, more websites that sometimes are like JavaScript based, so it's not HTML and JavaScript, but they would be mostly uh, generated by JavaScript. And as John Miller uh, tweeted last year, uh, it's safe to assume that the web has moved from plain HTML, uh, and you need to embrace that. And this is mm, something that is really important to say at the very beginning. And going back to the two waves of, of JavaScript indexing and all the stuff, so this year at Google I.O. Uh, in States, there's a lot, a lot of focus on uh, modern JavaScript frameworks and JavaScript in general. And uh, this is really interesting because you can see how uh, how it becomes a center of attention in a way. And they announced um, what uh, they call uh, I'm sorry, they, what they call two waves of indexing. So there is just crawl and index that we know from uh, our HTML world, let's say. So in this instant first wave of indexing, Google just crawls HTML and CSS and index everything. But if there are some resources that, uh, that depend on JavaScript to be visible or just to be uh, processed by JavaScript, they need to be processed by JavaScript, you actually have to wait. And what's actually interesting, this uh, second wave with, with dotted, um, 
autos here uh, may take anywhere from a few hours to uh, to a week or more. So you may have a website with just an URL indexed, uh, maybe some some basic data, but without all of the JavaScript um, generated data index in uh, Google Index. It, it sounds confusing, but I will show you an example, which I think is an example of this problem later on. Basically, uh, there are two waves and I will go through that in detail later on, but this explains some of the JavaScript indexing issues. And you can find more about, uh, uh, like under these two links, the so first one is my article from last year, and the second one, so Google I.O. Uh, is basically the uh, video where John Miller uh, and Tom are explaining that. Uh, so the key question right now, so is why isn't this process instant? So we have this first wave, and that's basically instant, as you can see on the screen. So why can they, being such a powerful uh, organization, make the JavaScript indexing instant as well? And this is something we're going to dive into uh, a little bit deeper. Uh, so first of all, uh, last year, oh, actually this year, at the beginning of this year, I wrote the article about uh, JavaScript affecting crawler budget and uh, how JavaScript-powered um, website isn't really crawled uh, that much. And it explains why, um, actually, I didn't know why at that moment, but it explains how JavaScript websites have huge crawling problems and that crawling JavaScript is expensive. Um, and what actually was mentioned recently, uh, that JavaScript, the rendering of JavaScript is deferred until Googlebot has resources available to process that content. And this quote is extremely important for you guys because we're going to talk about the resources and how your website can actually affect uh, those resources. And there's a few more quotes I chose for you guys uh, that I think are really crucial to, to understand. Um, that rendering requires a lot of time and, uh, and, and power and resources. Uh, so this is a serious challenge even for Google. And it takes a lot of processes, power, process, processor power and memory. And while Google has so much different resources, it doesn't have infinite, infinite resources at the same time. And in 2011, it was believed that uh, one user and one user takes like one use, one Google user uh, requires around 60 watt uh, watt of uh, of energy at Google. I believe that ever since they started playing with JavaScript, these numbers went way, way up. Uh, and I'm going to explain you why exactly, because there is some real cost of JavaScript out there that most of you, uh, I hope that you are aware of that, but I, I believe that a lot of people are, are not. So JavaScript lives in our CPUs. And I will show you a few examples uh, of that, but basically it requires a lot of processor power in your uh, computer, mobile, whatever, uh, among of other things like memory and battery power and whatever, but CPU is the most important. And we can compare JavaScript to HTML as being extremely, extremely um, resource, uh, uh, resource, um, it basically requires quite a lot of resources. Like we can compare that to Gas Guzzler and that hammer that you see on the screen for those of you who are not really interested in cars or a Toyota Prius that doesn't need that much fuel. So JavaScript needs quite, quite a lot of power to be processed. So putting that into very simple words, you need to put, you need, to a, lot, you need a lot of resources to see the content generated by JavaScript. And I have no idea because I was trying to see how much more expensive it is to process JavaScript. Um, and I found a lot of numbers between 10 and 150. Uh, but I would say for the sake of this presentation, let's assume that processing JavaScript is 100 times more expensive for Google and than HTML. Mm, and let me show you one uh, case study that, that's going to be very interesting for you, I guess. 
And if we go to USA Today, they did this thing with uh, GDPR uh, where they, like that's USA Today, it requires a lot of JavaScript uh, to, to be uh, loaded uh, with the, all the pop-ups and stuff, but they, um, and as you, as you see in your Chrome developer tools, uh, it requires a lot of CPU power. So for a good 30 seconds, um, my CPU in very powerful MacBook uh, Pro 15 inch was hammered. So it was really busy processing that website so it could be um, viewed by me on, on my laptop. Uh, at the same time, uh, they launched something they call, so USA Today launched something they call European Union uh, Experience. And it looked like that. Uh, and I tweeted them if they forgot the CSS or uh, whatever, because it looks <laughs> very plain. But at the same time, this website had no JavaScript uh, on the front end. They had they, they basically stripped it from most of the uh, ad tracking and whatever. And as you can see, the CPU load was all, almost uh, zero. So you can see the impact that CPU had on uh, website like uh, USA Today. Uh, at the same time, if you launch the USA Today, not the European ex experience version, but the USA Today in USA, sorry, that sounds confusing, without JavaScript. Uh, and so it looks almost the same. So that's USA Today with JavaScript disabled. Um, but you don't see that uh, all the resources uh, there is not that much resources needed to basically render and uh, yeah, and paint that website. So I, I will go with one more uh, extreme example of Guardian. Uh, and Guardian is, uh, I chose Guardian because Guardian and Amazon are uh, believed to be like super performance superstars. And um, if you go to any uh, development, uh, any conference where there's a lot of developers like JavaScript developers or front-end developers, and they would always look uh, at those websites and basically try to uh, understand what they did to be so fast. Uh, but at the same time, how fast do you think the Guardian would load uh, using like GT metrics or web page test? So if we look at that, uh, it looks really bad because you would see fully loaded after 10 seconds, and on a 3G connection, it's 41 seconds. So it looks pretty bad. And there's quite a lot of requests, almost 400 and so on. But if you try to load the Guardian, you would see the content straight away. So you can see why they're called. Uh, and you can see all the stuff that's basically depending on JavaScript. Uh, let me launch again, loading over time. So first they would just load HTML. And then you will see the weather here in a second. All the JavaScript um, or ads, all the stuff that relies on JavaScript is gonna be loaded uh, after a little bit because it takes a little bit of resources to process. And at the same time, if we compare the Guardian with like Daily Mail or any other website on a mobile, they're extremely good. And you can see that for the Daily Mail and the stuff in the bottom of the page is not really visible yet. So they're really, really performant, but this performance comes with a huge, huge price, a price that you pay with your CPU. And if you go to Chrome Developer Tools performance uh, by following the links, uh, the shortcuts on the screen, you can see that the Guardian is, I think, one of the um, most uh, <laughs> resource intensive websites I checked in a while. So on a high-end machine, uh, you can have the website loaded within 10 seconds. Mm, so that's the best CPU you can have in a MacBook. At the same time, mm, you can see that during that 10 seconds, there was quite a lot of work done on my CPU. Uh, but with slower CPUs, uh, this time goes up to 90 seconds. So just to fully load the same website, it's, uh, it's a 80 seconds. Sorry, I had to do the math quickly. So it's an 80 seconds difference. Um, and if we look in deeper into CPUs, uh, the average phone, uh, average mobile that people are using uh, is gonna be Moto G Motorola G4. 
And looking at the, at the bigger picture of uh, all the devices, uh, it's not the most performant uh, device. At the same time, some of the mobiles would be even more powerful than MacBook Pros. So like iPhone X uh, has extremely powerful CPU. Mm, and I've created this beautiful chart just to show you some of the uh, devices. So I did all the tests on my laptop, which is on the far left. At the same time, most of your users are gonna be on a phone with, on a mobile with or, or a laptop with performance of Motorola G4, iPhone 6, or a Google Chromebook, which is very, uh, not, not very good performance wise. So you will see the a huge difference for your users just based on JavaScript. Mm, and unfortunately, not all the websites are like the guardian to like defer JavaScript loading when you can see the content and it doesn't really bother you that much. So I went and checked AccuWeather, which is uh, you know one of the top, I think top 40 web uh, in top 40s uh, in UK. Mm, and okay, this website takes six seconds to first meaningful paint on a high-end CPU again, and um, it requires a lot of CPU while uh, being loaded, but that's fine. Uh, and if we change the device to Motorola G4 or a Chromebook or any device with with like more of the median or average uh, performance, it goes up to 19 seconds. So you will see a huge, huge um, problem just between two different devices. So there's 13 seconds difference between a high-end CPU and a slow uh, CPU. So you can imagine now how difficult is that for Google, uh, we're gonna get to the numbers in, in a second to crawl and index JavaScript on, on such scale. And that's that's just, by the way, a real book, that thing you see on, on the screen. I just uh, figured it's gonna be an interesting uh, topic for our um, bridge to another uh, another case study. So, Sorry, I had to uh, make sure that my voice still works. So um, enter Netflix. So Netflix is on the other end of uh, the JavaScript performance uh, here. So Netflix invests quite a, lot of, uh, quite a lot in React and they made the decision last year to remove all the React, client-side React from the front end and just keep the React framework on the back end. Mm. And it was interesting because it was picked up by Googler, so as you can see by Jake Ar Archibald here, or mm, and it was huge. Like this, this information, this tweet was really, really popular. So by just getting rid of React, uh, they saw a huge reduction in their uh, time to the interactive metric. But at the same time, if you look at uh, Netflix homepage uh, where they did it it doesn't have a lot of features. It would be like a join free for a month button and few other things. So they needed, Java, they needed JavaScript framework, which is React for language switcher, buttons uh, on the bottom of the page and client side login library. So um, what they did is they removed uh, 200 kilobytes. So that's quite a lot of code from the front end. They replaced it with just 300 lines of plain JavaScript or vanilla JavaScript code. It resulted in 50% performance improvement, which was really outstanding for amount of work it actually needed. And why am I telling you that? So uh, Netflix performance and SEO, because I will show you that those two things kind of go hand in hand, doesn't depend on client CPU that much. In this scenario, Googlebot being a client as well. But again, we're gonna get through, go through this uh, in a second. So as you can see, regardless of the device I'm gonna use, so if it's gonna be a, uh, sorry, if any of you owns Motorola G4, if it's gonna be a shitty phone or a very good um, desktop or laptop, whatever, you're gonna see similar uh, times to load. So just to visualize that even more, 
that's one of my favorite examples ever. So I use it like all the time. Uh, loading of one, like let's say we have 200 kilobytes of, of JPEG image and JavaScript on the front end. So it's gonna take split of a second for a JPEG to load and JavaScript needs around four seconds. And this is on a decent machine. So the, the, this number is gonna go up on a mobile. And how about 400 kilobytes? Because that's more or less what's the, what the average um, amount of JavaScript on the front end is. So you would expect that mobile uh, websites would have, with mobile first especially, uh, would have less JavaScript um, on the front end, which is not really uh, the case. So if we look at the average of 350 or 400 kilobytes, you can see a huge problem for for the Googlebot, for users to process all this JavaScript, and those numbers are still growing. And now I think you've got a little bit more understanding of why Googlebot or Google has to defer um, crawling and indexing, uh, actually just rendering and indexing JavaScript until they have resources. One thing that uh, it's also interesting that we can imagine that there is some kind of queue for a rendering and that's that the, and, and depending on your website's authority or importance in some way, uh, you can be pushed to the front or the end of the queue for the render. Uh, and that that's something interesting to play with and uh, research in the future. Mm, and how do you make sure that you're not caught between those two waves of uh, indexing and your website can wait, load instantly? So that's a very, very complex topic, hence the chaos in the title of the presentation today. So uh, John Miller mentioned that there are 130 trillion documents on the web. I couldn't find this exact quote um, be, to, to put it in my deck, but they also mentioned that they crawled uh, 20 billion pages per day. So if you imagine that um, even 1% of those is JavaScript, that's extremely, extremely resource intensive. And I'm guessing that it may be more than 1%. So adding to that, the exponential growth of JavaScript frameworks we need to start embracing a little bit of chaos because chaos is there all it's always there when there is like intense growth uh, and at the same time everyone wants to be cool in 2018 and there is uh, this huge growth of, of, of obviously all the uh, cryptocurrencies at the same time uh, javascript frameworks so there is so many javascript frameworks out there that it's really difficult sometimes to go through uh, all of the Mm, all of the different features and problems. Uh, for example, Basecamp uh, created their own JavaScript framework, God knows why, and there is a lot, a lot more. Uh, but just to give you an insight for about like the basic of JavaScript uh, frameworks, the, the big three, so the three most popular uh, frameworks, which is Vue, React, and Angular. React is, uh, is basically supported by Facebook. Angular is supported by Google. Uh, but also there is a lot of what we could say notable frameworks at the same time and I'm sorry and, and so-called uh, rest of the pack. So and that's just the, the frameworks that are quite popular but there is so many more uh, out there. So the questions you would usually ask, uh, ask is are they okay for SEO? So it's really complicated. The relation of JavaScript frameworks and Google is complicated and very, very complex. And let me let me show you an example from uh, some of the framework creators. So if you look at the Jeff uh, Wellplay from Angular, he said very, very clearly, and he had a whole session about that at, um, uh, sorry, U Angular U conference. Uh, in 2015, that if you care about SEO, you still need to have server rendered content. Uh, at the same time, we all know uh, that Google uh, pushes the info that they're able to render and understand uh, our web pages just like modern browsers. Mm, so 
it may be a little bit disconnected, but at the same time, uh, there is a rule in this chaos. So we need to embrace the difference between indexing and ranking at the same time, because that's a whole other uh, thing that we need to understand with JavaScript. So even if Google can index your, Java, your JavaScript website, it may be uh, problematic for you to rank. So the key question is, I think, from this uh, deck is, can you rank with a JavaScript website? Uh, and as Googlers would say, because I asked this question to both John Miller and Ilya Grigory, there are factors at play here. And let me show you an example of Hulu, which to this day has huge, huge problems with JavaScript, even though I wrote a case study about their problems, I think it was last year, somewhere like a long, long time ago. Um, so if we search for Hulu's exclusive shows in States, uh, and those are the shows that you can only find on Hulu.com, you will see that they sometimes lose rankings to uh, either torrent websites or some other website that shouldn't be there. For like, for example, if you watch Naruto online, you will only see um, websites that are not even closely related to Hulu. For casual, you won't find them at all. You will only find torrent websites. Uh, and if you copy paste any of the content from casual, uh, from hulu.com slash casual, you will find uh, anything but uh, hulu.com. So you can see that, and, and just to not let you know, hulu.com, I probably should have mentioned that earlier, hulu.com is a JavaScript uh, powered website as John, John Muller would, uh, would say. So here is why mm -hmm, client rendered JavaScript websites may be problematic. Uh, so you will see a lot of examples of JavaScript being a core problem, even though it's sometimes misdiagnosed. And um, I'm not sure that this is the case here, but let me just show you a very, very interesting example. So YouTube versus Vimeo are two, let's say they compete, but obviously uh, this is not a fair game uh, for, uh, for Vimeo, but anyways, we can see that Vimeo has a like, decline in their visibility over the last uh, good five years. At the same time, YouTube, after a little bit of a drop, is growing. Um, so why is Vimeo declining, even though that this is still a very popular platform? Uh, this is their website with JavaScript disabled. Um, you won't see any of the content by the H1 header and all the other headers. Um, and it doesn't look very well. Mm, and as far as I know, it's not uh, pre-rendered for, for Google. At the same time, YouTube mm, has a huge secret of their own mm, because YouTube is a client-rendered JavaScript website. That's how YouTube looks like with JavaScript disabled, but uh, they are pre-rendering all the content for Googlebot. So basically Googlebot gets a HTML snapshot. So that's really interesting because why would they do that if Google can render JavaScript just fine? That, that shows us that if YouTube is pre-rendered, uh, that's probably one of the best, uh, that, that's the best practice. And we can just speculate that maybe that's why uh, they were losing uh, traffic in the past. Mm, but one of my favorite examples is Hulu versus Netflix, um, because Netflix, for the first time in a while, uh, is winning with Hulu. And I believe it's because of the technical SEO, because of the technical approach that, that Netflix has. Um, if we look at, uh, sorry, if we look at the comparison between Netflix and Hulu, uh, this is how both look with JavaScript disabled. Not much has changed for Netflix, but Hulu.com, uh, you won't see a thing. And there is also this uh, idea of JavaScript affecting crawler budget I mentioned before. Uh, so uh, if you follow the link, you can read the whole article. But in our experiments, Google isn't really very good with crawling uh, JavaScript powered websites. So basically, the crawling would be extremely slow or would just stop. Uh, so this is another problem for indexing. And after a while, uh, John Miller also mentioned that indexing and crawling is slower than for static HTML. 
and what actually uh, what actually um, is interesting and adds up to this chaos idea is crawling and indexing is not a black and white thing. Uh, there is there are so many factors affecting that. So with just jQuery, very simple uh, JavaScript, we saw a different crawling depending of on the placement of JavaScript. So it, if, if for inline Google would crawl the URL, for external uh, they wouldn't, for Ajax call they would. So there is all these small things that I'm guessing affect uh, the price of the crawl uh, from Google's perspective affect your crawler uh, budget. So JavaScript, uh, first of all, you need to know those are dozens of different frameworks, each of them having their pros and cons and problems and uh, and and issues that may affect um, crawling and indexing. And you can configure every single framework in a different ways. So I'm guessing there are not two websites with exactly the same configs. So it's not safe to say that Angular is bad and React is good or the other way around because there are so many ways that you can you can do it. There are things like transpiling, ES5, ES6, inline versus externals. All those things affect uh, indexing a lot. Uh, and those are the things to look into and have in mind. Mm, on top of that, there are all the old school uh, factors affecting crawling and indexing JavaScript. And if you really want to embrace chaos, uh, let's go and talk about search engines other than Google. And now we can really appreciate uh, Google's transparency because this is really bad. So if you look at Bing, um, Bing statements is that uh, are one thing. Reality is different. And there is this uh, guy from Bing at PubCon and our experiment. So let me show you uh, the, the problem. Patrick Stocks mentioned that Fabrice Canal said, that looks, that sounds complicated, but Fabrice Canal of Bing said that Bing processes JavaScript, which is true, but uh, it comes with a lot of problems that uh, I will explain now. So if we look at Google Webmaster um, help, they mentioned not to bury links to content inside JavaScript, and they even compare it to uh, to Flash. Uh, so it's clearly said that they don't process JavaScript right now, looking at their uh, webmaster help. Mm, at the same time, looking at any of our experiments, um, they don't really uh, process JavaScript uh, with this one. Um, exception I will mention at the end. But if you go to angular.io, probably one of the uh, biggest Angular uh, websites, uh, client client uh, site, Angular websites I know, um, and if you copy any of the text from the website um, and search for that in Bing, you won't find anything from angular.io. So you can basically see and uh, that Angular that is completely de-indexed from uh, from Bing. Uh, at the same time, our experiment completely de-indexed from Bing. Only the URLs would be indexed, but the content wouldn't be uh, wouldn't be there really. So we can assume that Bing doesn't process JavaScript. But I already told you there is an exception. Uh, I will mention that in a second. But uh, right now we can see that Google is so much better than Bing. And if we speculate, I would assume that Bing doesn't have the resources and won't have the resources ever to process JavaScript fully because it would be too expensive for them. Uh, if it's that expensive for Google, you can imagine Bing with having like just a percentage of the market. Uh, uh, but there is light at the end of the tunnel for Bing I mentioned before, so that exception uh, is my friend Dan Petrovich mentioned uh, a client of his who actually is a client-side render JavaScript website and uh, is indexed in, Google, in Bing. So that's interesting case study to, uh, to look, look into. Sorry, so if we look at DuckDuckGo, and Yandex, uh, and other search engines, so Yandex mentioned that they work, uh, they're working on that. Uh, I have no idea about DuckDuckGo and um, 
uh, and I, I will tell you, in my opinion, it's impossible for any other search engines than Google to afford crawling and indexing Bing, uh, indexing JavaScript. Uh, and you will see that Ask uh, is also processing JavaScript quite well. Uh, it's because uh, they are powered by Google. So basically, there is only one search engine uh, able to do that. And I believe that once Google uh, will make sure that JavaScript is processed in the same way as HTML, um, other search engines which will have huge problems with with, with indexing the, the same content. Uh, at the same time, if, you, if so, if you're launching a JavaScript website, uh, you're looking at a huge shrink of your uh, market share. So in states, you would only have 64. Uh, so Google plus ask, so 50, let's say 65% let's say of the market. Uh, it wouldn't affect you as much in UK or, for example, Germany. Uh, but I wrote about that last year. So feel free to, to go and read uh, about that in detail. Uh, but let's have a closer look at Google again. Uh, so there, there are issues that um, that happen in Google a lot. So I call I call this uh, presentation that this is a chaotic landscape because um, there are so many things that we still don't understand, even though that Google shared some details. Uh, and a lot of case studies, a lot of problems. Uh, show that JavaScript indexing is very shaky. Uh, and you, you will see that with this example. So if we go uh, into GitHub and look uh, up an issue uh, reported by Angular.io, so guys from Google uh, working on, on Angular, they saw that at one moment, uh, their website got the index from Google. So Angular.io got the index, which is huge because it's a huge website. And uh, I talked to John Miller about that. He mentioned that they had no index meta tag, which may be true, uh, but it wouldn't explain this uh, screenshot that they posted at GitHub. And it wouldn't expect uh, this uh, pattern that they saw at the same time. So they saw that anything that goes uh, one directory, that, that deeper than what just one directory deep, um, into the structure would get completely de-indexed by Google. So my assumption would be that maybe Google was saving resources or maybe uh, for some reason uh, they only went with the top level URLs. But uh, that's the quote from, so the only thing those pages have in common is the number of path segments in the URL. So you will see a huge website completely de-indexed from Google or partially de-indexed from Google just because they're client-side rendered Angular. And if you don't know Igor Minar, he's a smart guy. So I'm guessing uh, whatever he said, uh, he, he did a little bit of research about that. Uh, at the same time, Google uh, Angular.io has no visibility and we can see that they have huge problems with ranking. But imagine how much would that cost you if you had a store and all of your uh, deeper URLs would be completely de-indexed. Uh, but there is one more example I want to share, like premium.io and partial indexing. So we can have a website, that's something we just saw last year, that's just partially indexing Google. So if we copy uh, the uh, the H1 from uh, premium.io, uh, sorry, if we copy any content from premium.io, we won't find that in Google. So you won't find any of the content from the page. Uh, at the same time, if you copy the, their H1 uh, tag, you will see their website. So Google was able to, to index their H1 uh, tag, but didn't uh, find uh, their content. So that's something that may come into these uh, two waves of indexing uh, scheme, where basically Google fetched the HTML version and was waiting to come back with process and JavaScript later. At the same time, rankings of pre-render.io are not very good. They don't really rank for any of the keywords that they should be ranking for. So this creates a huge disconnect between SEOs, developers, search engines, and framework creators. This creates, creates a little bit of chaos. And um, at the same time, developers are really confused 
about uh, the best um, scenarios for JavaScript. And just to show you that, mm, I already showed this uh, to uh, to the survey, but but I, I'm guessing that not, not of you saw that. But this is the most confusing JavaScript survey uh, we ever uh, created, and it was only one question. Uh, and the question was, uh, the question proved to be the most difficult question you can ask your developer. And it was, can uh, client side render JavaScript a website rank high in Google? So basically, can JavaScript a website rank in Google? And it was just two options, yes or no. And we asked that uh, in different JavaScript groups. So Node.js developer group said, no, uh, it can't rank in Google. Uh, React was, a little bit more positive about the problem, but not really sure. Uh, Angular was on the edge, as you can see, and uh, the JavaScript group was the only where almost everyone was sure that this is uh, possible. So this brings me to a solution. So uh, we as SEO team should be the glue that basically holds all this together. So we should help frameworks creators, search engines, and developers um, gather the knowledge from those fields and help developers implement that. Uh, but going back to my question, so can you rank well with a client and render JavaScript website? I asked that on Twitter, I was looking into this problem for uh, a long time and I found uh, Mintra. So this is a huge e-commerce in India. And if, as you can see with JavaScript enabled, it works. If you disable JavaScript, the content is gone. Uh, and they're on React Native and they rank very very well they rank for watches uh, shoes whatever you you google for in india you will find them uh, but at the same time uh, at the same time there is uh, a problem so is there hope for a javascript client website with mentra uh, well not so much um, the problem is that uh, if you disable javascript and scroll down a little bit. Mm. Sorry, it's just low. So if you disable JavaScript and scroll down a little bit, you will see this huge block of mm, of uh, content made for SEO. Uh, and if we look into the code, uh, this div is called SEO container. So they basically rank with this huge. Uh, content drop in their footer. Um, and they don't really have any long tail uh, rankings or traffic because they don't do that for products. Uh, so we uh, also have a very interesting example of Google Flights. So again, Google Flights, if you copy any of the content from Google Flights, you won't find Google Flights in Google. So they also have huge JavaScript problems uh, and they are. you can read more about that by following the link on the screen. And they are Google, so, so they should actually know better uh, about, uh, about all that. Um, so just to summarize some of the findings from Google I.O. and just to show you the look behind the curtain, why all these problems exist, uh, I've created a brief summary. So with HTML, your crawling and indexing is instant. So basically, Google is visiting your website and almost instantly, instantly uh, indexing your uh, content. Mm, but um, the uh, JavaScript makes it a little bit more complex with two waves of indexing, and you can have partial indexing as well. And uh, Tom Greenway uh, from uh, Google also mentioned that some details might be missed, missed and mm, there is this complex nature of this two-phase uh, indexing pro process. So. So make sure that you're riding the first wave rather than the second wave, because uh, wave number two depends on JavaScript, and it won't change for canonicals, for metadata and HTTP codes. So uh, after the first uh, first wave of indexing, when Google is back with rendered JavaScript, and uh, they won't really uh, find all the uh, other uh, stuff, like like 404 page, for example. Mm. And indexing modern JavaScript is a challenge. And there are a few ways you can render your uh, JavaScript website, like uh, client-side rendering I mentioned. So basically, you push all the JavaScript to the client. 
uh, there is server side rendering so uh, server does all all the rendering for you and HTML is basically pushed to uh, to to the client so to the to the browser and there is what they uh, call hybrid rendering and this is their recommendation so they push HTML uh, for browsers and crawlers but all the interactions uh, actually depend on JavaScript mm. And they call it a policy change of dynamic rendering. So they actually say that the best way for you uh, is to uh, pre-render for Googlebot rather than pushing JavaScript. I'm not sure why this is a policy change. Uh, and they recommend some of the tools for rendering uh, as well, which we won't go into too much. But uh, just so you know, when you recommend pre-rendering to any of your clients, uh, it's extremely expensive so i'm just gonna go quickly because i think we're a little bit behind time uh, but we have a client with 950 servers for just pre-rendering uh, we, we already went through javascript uh, cpu problems for your computer and now imagine that for a few million pages that you have to refresh every day uh, pre-rendering is also very prone to issues and issues mean ranking loss uh, and it, it, it can go really, really badly. Uh, you need to crawl two sets, sets of, of URLs because one is pre-rendered, one is uh, JavaScript and it requires a lot of knowledge and it requires a lot like a great developer team on the other side to make it run smoothly. Uh, and Google is uh, advising to use dynamic website when you're uh, your website is large and it's rapidly changing. Mm, I wouldn't really uh, go with this approach. I think it's still not safe to launch a client that render JavaScript website. Looking at, for example, Angular.io or Hulu, it's still a problem. Uh, so just to troubleshoot some of the issues, you can fetch and render with Google Search Console that you knew. Look at the code there as well because you will see uh, how it looks like. Um, and if you're, for example, if your canonical tags and your metadata is there, uh, use Google friendly, uh, Google mobile friendly test, which is a new thing recently uh, with some new features added. It's very good. You can see, uh, for example, a huge problem for Hulu because on the right you will see, or on the right hand side, you see a screenshot from my Chrome. On the left hand side, you can see a screenshot from uh, mobile friendly test. So the content is missing the content we couldn't find uh, in Google. Uh, so compare this code from mobile friendly test with uh, your real source code and you will see uh, what, how Google uh, processed your, your HTML and JavaScript. Um, at the same time, you can see page loading issues. So all the JavaScript issues that may be out there. For example, here we can see some uh, major problems for Hulu again. And your homework is to go through Diff Checker. This is the best website. I, I, I'm sorry, I don't have the link, but just Google Diff Checker, and you will see the how Google is processing your code and how the processed code looks like and where are the differences. Uh, so in this example, uh, in this example from the Discus uh, page, you can see that the title is different for processed uh, process JavaScript and source code. And go through server logs and see how Googlebot is crawling uh, your website because you may see some very interesting findings. Uh, and make sure that you uh, look at the features supported by Chrome 41 because, as you can see on the screen, the difference between Chrome 41 on the left and features supported by the latest Chrome 68 is, uh, is huge. So, not all the features are supported in Chrome 41, which is powering Googlebot. Uh, make sure your content is indexed uh, under the proper URL. So again, angular.io and the same problem. And um, make sure it's not indexed twice and all these other problems. Uh, this is something for you to take home. So just summary of all the to-dos. And just as a wrap up from me, uh, still 
even though we know so much about JavaScript, it, 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 still, it still can kill your crawler budget and JavaScript websites still don't rank very well um, um, unless I find one uh, that's uh, really uh, still the, the case. Uh, and ranking with client side render, render JavaScript is very hard, if not impossible. And this is the tab that we were working on for a while. So those are all the frameworks, JavaScript frameworks that uh, allow you to be client side, uh, sorry, server side rendered. So if you go, for example, with Knockout or some other frameworks that don't support server side rendering, you will always have problems with SEO or you will have to use uh, pre-rendering of some, of some sort. Uh, and future direction, according to Google, is uh, they, they will make this crawling and rendering process integrated with a modern Chrome browser. So they will up, upgrade that from Chrome uh, 41. Uh, we're still looking for someone to create a JavaScript uh, website that will rank in Google. So if you have uh, one like that, I will be super happy to see that. And uh, you can download my deck under this link. So it's uh, LFA slash, uh, sorry, L L yeah, you can see the link on the screen. Uh, and thank you. Thank you very much, guys. Brilliant, fantastic. Thank you, Bartos. Uh, so much to share. Um, I mean, we're pretty sorry, much on sorry, time. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> Why delay, John? But, uh, don't worry, mate. No problem at all. I mean, there's so much good stuff in that deck, and it's a deck which anybody that's working within the world of JS just absolutely needs to get their hands on because, in, you know, ultimately at the moment we're we're out of time for any Q and A. But I think if anybody has questions, there's an incredible amount of answers in that deck. So, as we run out of time for Q and A, what we're going to do is we're actually because we've been watching the questions come flying in. Um, there's lots of them, Bartos, which we'd be really glad to hear. We're going to probably wrap all of those questions up into a blog post from all of the people who have, have sent those questions in. We'll go through and we'll answer all of those questions for everybody that's asked a question today and get you an answer via Bartos for those questions and we'll post that back out as a blog post and as part of the wrap up for um, you know the overall uh, session on the chaotic landscape of JavaScript. We're also obviously going to take the recording and the deck and we'll send that out to all attendees that have attended who have signed up uh, for today and give you access to that ASAP more than likely over the next few days once we've kind of processed the, uh, the digital recording side of things as well. And there will also be a write up on the uh, Deep Crawl blog as of tomorrow for all of the, the finer points that you've probably been seeing flowing through the Twitter feed as well while Bartos has been taking us through this whole process. There's just so much to actually cover. Um, that today has been about the presentation, about the great content that Bartos had to present in there. I'd like to also say there will be, once we kind of sign out of this, for you guys that are still online, there is a, a survey at the end of the webinar. Please do give us your feedback. Uh, we want to make these things better. We want to hear about new topics that you guys would like to hear about. And as you probably well know as well, um, JavaScript as part of uh, the crawling engine that is Deep Crawl will be coming very, very soon uh, to the marketplace. So please do give us your details as well as part of that wrap up because we'll we'll let you know when when JavaScript is launching for um, for Deep Crawl as well. But believe me, it's incredibly imminent. Um, yeah, we so already lots... played with that and it was really, really nice to see. Thank you. And yeah. Well, it's coming soon. I mean, yeah, Bart has had a play with it because obviously he wanted the, the feedback from the best in the industry. So it's got his input as well, um, like all of the content that you've seen from him today. So there's there's lots for, for us to send out to you. But as I say, I promise you all questions will be answered um, and all access to all of the decks and everything that Bart has presented today will be sent to you as well. Uh, but please, please, please do give us that feedback. Um, our next webinar as well will be on site speed uh, with Mr. John Henshaw on the 28th of June. Um, so do watch out for the sign up to that. It will be coming out of the next week or so. Um, this really has been a, you know, a phenomenal webinar. It's been some great content there. And, um, you know, a big, big thank you to you, Bartos, for taking the time to present that uh, content. And obviously, it put so much great content together. Big thank you to you, sir. Thank you very much, John. Sorry for going behind time. Uh, not, yeah, not at all. I was happy to, happy to let it run, mate, because, uh, say, the stuff you're presenting is the, you know, is answering a lot of the questions that a lot of people have about JavaScript today. So, that, you know, that deck is absolutely invaluable. And I really do thank you for taking the time to put that together. And obviously, a big thank you to, um, to all of our attendees today as well. It's great to see a strong attendance again. Um, it just seems to get more and more people coming in for the webinars, which is great to see. Yeah, I'm, so, I'm surprised that this many people worldwide are interested in JavaScript. So that's <laughs> that was surprising. 
Testament to you, sir. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to wrap this one up because we've had the hour. Big thank you to everybody. And to say, watch out for the follow up emails for everybody that signed up today. My name is John Myers, uh, Chief Growth Officer at Deep Crawl. And a big thank you for attending our chaotic landscape of JavaScript. And I look forward to having you back on a webinar soon. Thank you, everybody. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys.